Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here, and when I mean Eric C, I mean Eric C with the big 19 next to it. Yep, we all caught it over here, and uh, well, exception of one person, which they got kind of lucky, very lucky. But uh, yeah, somebody wanted their Christmas present and wanted it really bad, uh, probably didn't even know they were sick, and passed it around here. So yeah, we had to get a hold of everybody that came over and let them know what was going on. You know, big ordeal, and uh, yeah, so it's been kind of fun. It's been a, let's see, uh, sinus pressure headache, um, chills, a little bit of a fever, um, and I'm talking the beginning of this. Can't breathe, cough, uh, let's see, um, loss of taste and smell, nothing other than that. It just feels like a really bad sinus infection. So I've got a shitload of tests over here. We each took one, and out of the five, four of us got it. So it's been kind of interesting. We've been quarantining ourselves and making sure we stay away from each other and not try to get it to kind of swing around back again. And uh, the one who got lucky enough not to get it, uh, hopefully they won't catch it either. So right now, we are all testing negative, as far as I know. And... Uh, I guess we're just letting it play, it play its course. Now, none of us got vaccinated. We have our own reasons for that. And uh, yeah, so basically just feels like a really bad sinus infection. Infection. And I tell you what, cigarettes uh, with the loss of taste and smell. Um, now, uh, my taste is coming back a little bit. Smell is coming back a little bit. And I tell you what, cigarettes just taste like, bur I smoke menthols. And cigarettes just taste like burning paper and have the smell of burning paper. So yeah, it's probably a good way to quit smoking. Anyways, so as you can see here, I'm working on the Sterling again, and uh, now I'm feeling better and everything. I can get some get some work done. So what I got going on here is I'm putting on a even coat of the veneer type on glue, and uh, I just want to make sure that I'm getting good coverage all the way around and transparency from the glue to through the wood to see what the wood looks like is even all the way around that way I kind of know that the uh, glue is spreaded the way that I want it to be now off to the well it would be let's see your left yeah your left there's the piece of veneer that I'm going to be gluing down to the top of this body now I figured instead of having trouble with it or having an issue like I had last time where it kind of just got, came out all wavy with putting just weight on top of it well I'm going to do something else here so that's the back that's the front and the reason why I put masking tape all over is because I don't want the veneer to split when uh, you see the next portion of what I'll be doing so I'm lining everything up over here getting everything to basically close to the edges there is a little bit of an overhang that did make the veneer a little bit bigger than the actual body of the guitar uh, again the tape is there for basically keeping it from splitting when um, it comes under pressure and you'll see what I mean under pressure I figured I'd do this the right way and uh, the cool thing about it is what I picked up uh, I can use it again and again and again so this is gonna work out pretty good right now I've got the uh, veneer lined up where I want it I'm taping it in place to so it doesn't move around on me and uh, yeah so wait for the big surprise of what I, how I'm gonna do this because this is gonna be pretty good and uh, hopefully work out better than better than I thought it would So here's the big surprise. I have got a vacuum bag. Figured I'm gonna do this the right way and it's reusable. I can reuse this bag anytime I wanna use, do this again. And uh, yeah, so this is gonna work out pretty good. A lot better than just adding weight to the top of the body. And you know, hopefully this will keep me from having the waves in it. Now this is not a real thick, thick bag. They say it is a thin air pressure kit. Um, I'm thinking more of the air pressure itself than 
the actual bag itself. The bag is not thin at all. It's actually pretty thick. So this mesh goes in on top of the project. This way you can get air. It doesn't suck the plastic to your project. Uh, it can get, you know, absorb or suck out all the air around the project and still get a nice firm tight seal with your uh, between your glue and your, your project that you're gluing up. So here is just like a, it's like a tar type material, like a tape. And uh, all you do is just press it after removing it. They give you plenty of it. This is uh, Roar, Ro bleh, Roar Rocket Thin Air Press. And uh, it comes with all the instructions of how to use it. So you, you're not going to be scratching your head trying to figure it out. You don't need a vacuum with this or some type of a reverse uh, vacuum pump. All you need is this here little air, hand air pump and it'll start sucking out the air as soon as you start pulling on it. And yeah, it does work. Um, basically all I did was just kept on pulling until it wouldn't stop or until it stopped sucking air and then that was it. And uh, I guess I'm just going to let this sit for a while after it uh, you know, let it cure up for a few days, open her up and see what the outcome is. So hopefully it seems to be pretty tight, around the edges it seems to be pretty tight, not a whole lot of wrinkling going on on the top, and yeah, it's kind of, yeah, this is going to work. This should work out pretty good. And I should be able to, within a couple days, be able to open this thing up and see what the results are. If this works out, then great. I will be doing a lot more veneering. Um, if not, then I would chalk this up as another experience that sucks. Oh well, right? What can you do? All right, so that's it. And uh, yeah, so I picked up some new toys and I'll show them to you right now. All right, so I picked up a few things, not too much. Uh, some stuff that I'm going to end up using as my builds go on. So right here, as you can tell, you know, it's just some coils of wire. So I got about, uh, let's see, this is 30, 60, uh, I think there's about 70 or 80 feet of cloth wrapped wire. I love this stuff. Uh, I, I go through, been going through it like water. I don't have much of it left over, so I end up grabbing some more of it. Stuff comes in really handy. I love that it's easy to work with. You don't have to try to strip the wires, just push it back and exposes whatever end that you need to solder. Pretty nice. This here is something that I've been wanting to get. I have to do a little bit of modifications to it because um, as it sits right now, it can damage a finish on a guitar, especially um, if you're not using anything to protect the finish as far as some type of a, uh, a very thin rubber pad or, or uh, a piece of felt or something. What this is, yep, if you guessed that, it is a kind of like a drill press, but a free-floating drill press, uh, you're right. So what this is, is you end up attaching a cordless drill to the top of it. Put your um, bit inside the chuck over here, tighten up the chuck. There is a bearing in here, this does move very freely. You've got uh, springs on each side. The cheaper ones has a spring on one side. I wanted the spring on both sides. Plus I wanted a thicker uh, area over here that rides the, um, the side and reason for being that is if it's thinner well chances are you can kind of twist it and you're not going to get a straight shot going down nice straight hole so what i want to use this for is instead of taking a guitar body into the garage and using the drill press um well or the mill whichever you want to call it uh i could use it this down here and not have to go into the garage or whatever the only thing i have to do though is the bottom over here does have some sharp edges and what I need to do is make some mounting plates for the bottom over here. I've got some real thin felt um, or some real thin foam rubber, stuff that I use for putting like underneath the uh, Floyd Rose and uh, I can put that on here, this side and this side so when this these touch the body it's not going to damage it. Also this is... Uh, you can go on a 45 degree angle on either direction. Actually, you can go more than a 45. Uh, 
you can go in between 45 with this as well. It does have a lock to where you can lock how far down this should go. And what's nice is it it's, moves very nicely. It's very smooth. And again, like I said, this does not wiggle back and forth to where um, you can possibly start going off on an angle. As long as you have this in position where you want it to be, and drill nice evenly without putting a lot of force down. Let your drill bit do the work. Should work out pretty good. And of course, you've seen the airbag that I picked up, and this, this is the instructions on it. Um, yeah, this stuff is pretty. This is pretty nice. Right now, it's sitting off to the side over here and doing its job. I'm just going to let it uh, cure up and. Uh, wait for a couple days to see how it's going to be. Hopefully within a couple days I'll have more of these symptoms that I've got going on. I'll be back to my normal self, I hope. At least I know right now I'm not contagious. So you guys take it easy, have a good one, and keep doing your thing. I will catch up with you later. Oh, and welcome to the new year.